You know how they say that what's on the internet is out there forever? Well, it turns out that's true. Hello and welcome to the Laramie K Optician Works Training Center. I recently had a gentleman track me down through the website about an article that I had written over six years ago. The article was about a pair of glasses that I had made for someone that had distance at the top and Plano at the bottom. The gentleman wanted to know if I could do that again. And I thought, hey, what a perfect teachable moment. So let's just turn this into a lesson. So I'm gonna invite you inside the studio here and I'm gonna show you the process of what it took to make that pair of glasses. Never forget, we see with our brain, not with our eyes. If you look around, you're gonna see lots of people that take their glasses off to read, regardless of what their distance prescription is. These glasses work for people, so don't overthink ad powers and progressives and segment styles. If somebody came into my store and said, I want a pair with distance on top and clear on the bottom, well, as an optician, I made them a pair with distance on the top and clear at the bottom. When you start a project like this, I think one of the most important things is to just slow down, take your time and think about things. And the first thing I'm going to do, and you know, it's really a shame I, I told this fellow, you know, please send me a rectangular frame. Well, let me tell you, a round frame adds a lot of complexity to this. But the first thing I'm going to do is run two sets of lenses. I've got a right minus 50 minus 75 at 155, a left minus 50 minus 50 at 45. So I'm gonna cut those two lenses and I'm gonna cut two identical ones in Plano. Obviously the Plano is gonna be cut and it's gonna end up in the bottom of that frame. I'm lucky here, the powers are so weak that I can just kind of center these things. I don't really have to worry about a PD much. Um, that's gonna help me keep everything in alignment. Base curve should be very, very close as well, so they should line up pretty easily in the frame when I go to put things back together. I've got some surface tape. I'll definitely need to be protecting the front surface of these lenses as I work through it. I'm gonna be grinding them by hand in the edger, grinding them by hand on the handstone, and actually doing some hand work with a file and some sandpaper. So I really think that would be the very first thing I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna run these two complete sets and then I'll come back here to the bench and I'm gonna to have to come up with some ways of marking these. And I haven't even figured out what that is. I may be able to do it um, just with the surfacing tape and a bunch of notations on the lens, but that's gonna be a little tricky. Again, because of frame shape, it's so round, keeping my orientation marks, knowing which is top, which is bottom, left, right. But we'll get through it. So sit back, I'm just gonna run these two sets of lenses and we'll pick it up from there. Just doing my layout work, and I think I've already decided I'm gonna do something a little bit different here. My left looks pretty good, it's pretty well centered. My right's kinda of down a little bit. All right, I like my left, I, mean, I think I'm, I'm aiming for about the perfect center of this lens, which is about there, so that's a millimeter or so off. This one seems a little tiny bit low and a little bit over, so I'm gonna go here with my block instead. And what I'm doing is I'm using those, the, the three lens meter dots, I'm keeping this horizontal so this remains on axis, but because there's so little power, I can move this lens around quite a bit and Decide for myself where the center is going to be. I think I like that a little bit better than where it was. And that's just going to help me keep these two things together and hopefully have everything line up like the base curves when I'm ready to put them together. Good. All right, this is what we've got now. We have got two prescription, a right and a left, identical size, shape, everything else, and two planos. So I think the next thing I'm going to do, and that may be later today or even tomorrow, is make sure I've got these well indicated for right and left in Plano and prescription. Then I'm going to pull these blocks off. And then I'm going to come up with a way of uh, getting the surface tape on at tension 
so that I can get a good wrinkle-free adhesion to the front of these lenses to protect them. After I have that, I can mark where I want to cut each of these. One and remove the top, one I'm going to remove the bottom, and look at getting at least a, a rough cut going. Let me go ahead and clean these up. I may very well run out of battery time before I get to the next phase on this, but I'll just kind of keep running. I think I may end up tracing this frame on a piece of paper and see if I can work from there. Don't tell anybody, but right at the moment, I'm really not sure exactly how I'm gonna go about this. But as the saying goes, you never know unless you try. Here, I'm deciding where to place the line or the split between the distance and Plano. I had Joe send me a picture of him wearing the glasses and his eye appears to be right at half the B. So after playing around for a while, I decided to set the line at 18 millimeters. Here, I'm double checking, adjusting, checking, adjusting, until I'm sure I have everything right where I want it. Again, the frame shape makes this a very tricky process. As I just mentioned, your two best friends on projects like these are slow down and have patience. All right, I have got my right marked, my left marked. They can go back in, they can be square. And now what I need to do is put a good clean line across at that 18 and remove everything below that line. So let's go ahead and do that next. I have mentioned in other videos the importance of having surface tape on hand. Here, I'm using a technique that I picked up when I was doing surfacing. By stretching the tape across the roll of tape and creating a little tension, I can press the lens onto the tape from the back side and get great wrinkle-free adhesion. When doing handwork like this, you really must protect the lens, and surface tape is your best choice for doing that. Okay, and because the frame was, because the lenses were mounted in the frame, I come up with only about 16 here, so I need to actually remark this two and a half higher than it is. Shown here in fast motion, the edger is set to dressing mode. That means the wheel is spinning, water is flowing, and most important, the grind chamber door is open. This lets me reach in with the lens and hold it against the grind wheel. I'm doing this with medium pressure, I'm using a rocking motion, and I'm taking my time. It's a grind, check, grind, check, grind, check process. Once I reach my first indicator line, I stop. Too much, too soon, and I'd have to start the entire process over again. So much of this is just sitting and stopping and thinking about what you want to do next. Obviously, you don't want to watch me sit here and think about this. Draw, erase, rewrite, remeasure, check again. That would be pretty darn boring. So what we did, uh, you remember I made the red line and then I decided that was about two millimeters too low because that had been measured with the frame in place. So I put a black line. And I went over to the edger, as you saw, and I ran it on uh, grind, I'm sorry, dressing mode. And that just lets the wheels spin and gives me a nice roughing wheel. So I took it about a millimeter or two away from the red line. Now I'm gonna move over to the hand stone and take that down to just shy of the black line. Then I'll use a file to give me that nice flat finished edge because of course both the edger and the hand stone are round wheels. Same on here, of course, I've got the red line. I'm just about a millimeter shy of that. Handstone, file, and then we'll do the reverse once I figure out a good way to trace this for the planos so we have the bottom portion to put in there and see if we can tighten it all down in the frame. So our next step here is going to be hitting the handstone. Just like the edger, the handstone is shown here in fast motion. The handstone allows me to get very up close and personal with the lens and the wheel. If I position myself correctly, I can see exactly where my second line is in relationship to the wheel. 
just like the edger. Too much, too soon, and I'd have to start the entire process over again. So I take my time and I get the results I need. All right, we are post hand stone. That means we need to switch over to a file for our last step here. And right. And what this is doing is giving me that flat edge rather than risking having any curves in it. All right, I think I'm going to stop there on that one for the moment. My left is already a little bit closer. All right, I am pretty darn happy with where I am on that. That has got a little bit of a low spot, so let me see if I can get rid of that. I think we're good. All right, that's off of the file. Looks pretty good. Next step is gonna be taking the reverse of these, putting them onto that, and cutting off the top portion of the Plano so that we have that at the bottom. All right, this is where we are. I just spent a good another probably three or four minutes uh, for each lens, cleaned up my file a little bit. So I've got this beautiful flat straight edge on my right and the beautiful flat straight edge on my left. Now I need to transfer this, this to this and this to this. And I made myself some very clear indications of what I need to grind away because it is my nature to probably do the reverse and mess up the entire thing. Let's start with this one and get that lined up just perfect. I need to remove all that and leave that. I'm going to double check some measurements, go over, thing, every, over everything one more time, and then I'm just going to do the exact same thing I did with these. I'm going to go to the edger. I'm going to set it on dressing. I'm going to grind away a whole lot of material, give myself a second reference line here, grind down to that, hit the handstone, and then finish it up by hand with the file. So why don't I give myself a red line to work with there so I know where I'm bringing it down to. Give myself a little safety margin there. Uh, looks like it should be enough. And I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing. I'm going to put the surface tape on here, stretch it so I get a little bit of tension, push the lens through on the other side, trim it up so that if I drop it or anything, I may not destroy the lens while I'm doing this work. Okay, we've got our top halves, or top two thirds or so. Those are pretty well set. Now we've got to work on our lower pieces, and that's down to filing, and I know that's not something you wanna sit and watch me do for the next 20 minutes, but that's gonna be my job now, is to file these down just as I did those, so that they match up. It's looking pretty good, actually. All right, let me get started on that, and I've got my wire brush here to keep cleaning out the teeth on this file. A uh, really quick check-in here. Uh, my left is done. That looks really good. And what I've done here <clears throat> is deliberately used a really long tap and snap screw. That allows me to open the eye wire up enough to pop these in and then slowly close it and check my sizing. And as I don't take a little tiny screw out 15, 20 times, I can use the tap and snap use it as many times as I need to to get it tight, get everything set, and then just snip them off. 
a little bit better than using tiny little screws for a project like this. Left took me probably about 10 minutes of file work to get it to where it was perfect and sitting in the eye wire correct. Probably got about another 10 minutes or so left on the right. And then like I said, I'll take some close-up shots. I would say I have but one regret here, and that is I do not have a fresh set of nose pads to put on here for him. Oh, well, so it goes. All right, so I started this project at about 7 o'clock roughly this morning, I would say. 7, 8. With all the editing, everything, it's about 12.30 at the moment. Uh, I would say that Joe has got himself a pair of distance top Plano bottom glasses. Here are the results. Again, distance power at the top and Plano at the bottom. Projects like this can be fun and rewarding. Try it, you might just surprise yourself. Do not be scared of projects like this. Are you gonna go through a couple of lenses and some frames? Well, sure, but that's how you learn. Never stop learning, get your hands dirty once in a while, try new things, and believe me, your life as an optician is gonna be a whole lot happier.